What's up everybody? Welcome back. Patrick here moving on with financial planning. We're now going to be doing this example and this example is really tough. I'm going to try my best to explain it as smoothly as possible but just a heads up you may have to rewatch this video again for the information to all really sink in. There's going to be a lot of tricks, a lot of things to do in this question. So let's read it. So a company currently has total liabilities and equity of 150,000 and 400,000 respectively. Non-debt liabilities are projected to grow by 20,000. The debt is currently 100,000. The forecasted total assets and net income is 600,000 and 20,000 respectively. If the payout ratio is 30 percent, how much debt and equity must be issued to keep the debt to equity ratio constant. Now the first thing to notice with this question is that there are a lot of items on a balance sheet that are mentioned. So notice this uh, total liabilities, equity, non-debt liabilities, debt, and then forecasted total assets. So we know that we're probably going to have to work with a current balance sheet and then we're going to have to work with a projected balance sheet. And then we're going to have to make sure that the debt to equity ratio is constant. So it's the same on the current balance sheet and the projected balance sheet. So let's go through this information again and see what we can fill out with both of these. So a company currently has total liabilities and equity of 150,000 and 400,000 respectively. So that would go on the current balance sheet. So we got liabilities, which we know is on the right side of the balance sheet. That is 150,000. And then the equity is 400,000. Now, we are not told what the assets are currently for the company, but because we're given this information, we know what the left side of the balance sheet is going to be. It's going to be the liabilities plus the equity. So 150,000 plus 400,000 gives us 550,000. So that is a good starting point so far. So let's keep reading the information. So non-debt liabilities are projected to grow by $20,000 and the debt is currently 100,000. All right, so those two sentences, kind of tricky, but what it's implying is that they're taking the liability section of their balance sheet and they're splitting it up into two parts. They're splitting it up into non-debt liabilities or maybe like current liabilities, so short-term liabilities. And then the second part is just debt, which is maybe long-term liabilities, so long-term debt. So they're taking this liability of 150,000, they're splitting it up into current liabilities and into debt. So they say the non-debt liabilities or the current liabilities are gonna grow by 20,000 and they say the debt is currently 100,000. So we know the debt of these liabilities is 100,000. So if the total liabilities are 150,000 and the debt portion of those liabilities is 100,000, then we know the current liabilities are going to be 50,000. So let's actually erase this portion of the balance sheet and fill these in instead, make it more specific. Right? So that's the first trick of the question was that they took that total liabilities section of the balance sheet and they split it up into two parts into non-debt liabilities which I labeled as current liabilities here represented by CL and a long-term portion which we'll just call debt. All right so the current liabilities are 50,000 and then the debt here is a uh, hundred thousand because both of these have to add up to the total liabilities of 150,000. Now, you want to be careful with the wording. This wording might not always be the same as other questions. A lot of times, other questions will represent total liabilities as total debt, right? So sometimes those two words, total liabilities, total debt, they're used interchangeably. But in this specific question, debt doesn't represent the total liabilities. It represents the long-term portion 
of the liability. So in this specific question, it's different. So just be aware of that as well. So since the non-debt liabilities are projected to grow by 20,000, we know that this 50,000 is going to be 70,000 on this balance sheet. So we can fill that in right away. So the current liabilities on the projected balance sheet is going to be 70,000, 50,000 plus that growth of 20,000. All right, so let's keep reading. The debt is currently 100,000. We took care of that. The forecasted total assets and net income is 600,000 and 20,000 respectively. So this net income here, that is an income statement amount. So let's ignore that for now, but this forecasted total assets, we know that that's gonna be on the projected balance sheet. And that amount is going to be 600,000. And then we know the net income is 20,000. So let's just write that down here. And we'll come back to that later on, right? So let's just first deal with the balance sheet for now. And then the payout ratio is 30%. So from this net income, 30% is being paid out as dividends, right? But again, we'll come back to that later. And then the question is, how much debt and equity must be issued to keep the debt to equity ratio constant? So we're going to have to find what's the debt going to be and what's the equity going to be on this new balance sheet here. So because we don't know yet, that's what we're finding. Let's label the debt as variable X and let's label the equity as variable Y. That's what we're going to be finding first. And that debt to equity ratio has to be constant. So it has to be the same as this debt to equity ratio here. And notice how the current debt to equity ratio is the debt of 100,000 over the equity of 400,000. So 100,000 over 400,000, that simplifies, that fraction simplifies to 1 over 4. So let's, uh, let's just write 1 over 4 here. So that is the debt to equity ratio. And we have to maintain that debt to equity ratio here on the projected balance sheet. So we don't know what the debt, we don't know what the equity is, but we labeled them as variable X and variable Y. So we know that x over y has to equal 1 over 4. But that doesn't help us too much because notice how we have two variables we have to solve for. If everything was in terms of one variable, then we can cross multiply, solve for that variable. But if we cross multiply now, what we'll have is 1 times y, which is just y, y equals 4x and there's nothing we can solve for there. And here is probably the trickiest part of the question. What we can do is we can represent one of these variables, let's choose variable y, and represent it in terms of x using this balance sheet. Because we know the left side has to equal the right side, we can make an equation here. So we can say that 600,000 on the left side equals 70,000, the current liabilities or the non-debt liabilities, plus the debt of X and the equity of Y. Right, so I just made a simple equation here, taking the left side of the balance sheet, making it equal to the three parts on the right side of the balance sheet. And what we can do is we can isolate for this Y here. So let's keep the y on the right side of that equation. Let's bring the 70,000 over. So 600,000 minus 70,000, that would give us 530,000. And then let's bring this positive x over and that will be minus x. So we know y, the equity, has to equal 530,000 minus x. And what we can do now is we can take this expression for y and sub it in here, and then notice how everything is going to be in terms of one variable. 
So that is the trickiest part of this question, realizing that you can do that. All right, so one more time as a recap, we found the debt to equity ratio using the current balance sheet. So we took 100,000 divided by 400,000, which is one over four or 0.25 if you wanna work with decimals. I suggest just working with fractions in this case because it's pretty smooth. That one over four debt to equity ratio has to equal the new debt to equity ratio on the new balance sheet, which is X over Y. But we have two variables, so we can't solve for anything yet, but what we can do is we can make the left side and the right side of the projected balance sheet equal, and then we can make an expression for Y in terms of X, right? So bring in the 70,000 over and then bring in the X over, we get Y equals 530,000 minus X. So subbing in that expression for Y, 530,000 minus X in the denominator, we now have one over four, let me actually erase this debt over equity portion here. So we got one over four, the debt to equity ratio has to equal X over 530,000 minus X. And notice now how we have an equation with just one variable and we can solve for X. So what we can do is we can cross multiply. So four times X would give us four X. And then one times 530,000 minus X, that would give us 530,000 minus X. So this is like minus one X. So bringing this over, we'll have four X plus one X. That negative turns into a positive. So continuing this up here, so we'll have 5x on the left side equals 530,000. So then dividing both sides by five to isolate for that x, we would end up with x equaling 530,000 divided by five, that gives us 106,000. So that is X and that represents the debt that we would have. So this would be 106,000 on the balance sheet. And then what we can do, so I'm gonna erase all of this here, make sure you write this down. Um, we can take that expression for Y that we had, so we knew that Y equals 530,000 minus X, and we know that X, the debt, is 106,000. So 530,000 minus 106,000, that gives us um, 420. 4,000. So that's what our total equity is going to be. It's going to be 424,000. And you can check that. So you can take the debt of 106,000 divided by the equity of 424,000. Notice that you would get 0.25 or 1 over 4, which is the same as the debt to equity ratio that we had in the current balance sheet. And another check you can make is you could take the current liabilities of 70,000, add the debt of 106,000, add the equity of 424,000, notice how it's gonna equal 600,000. So the left side is equaling the right side. So we can be pretty confident from those two checks that the debt and equity amounts that we got here in the projected balance sheet are the correct numbers. So are we done the question yet? Well, no, because if you read it, it's asking us how much debt and equity must be issued to keep the debt to equity ratio constant. So these figures that we saw for represent the total debt and equity, but it's not the amount that we have to issue because we already started off with debt and equity. So the amount of debt that we have to issue, notice how the debt is going from 100,000 to 106,000. So how much new, uh, new debt do we have to issue? We have to issue $6,000 worth of debt, or we have to borrow $6,000 more. So the debt issue is going to be 6,000, which is just the difference between the new debt and the old debt. What about the equity issue? So the equity 
is the new equity is 424,000 and we started with 400,000. So the difference between those is 24,000. So is the equity issued gonna be 24,000? Well, no, it's not. Because notice how we didn't even use this net income yet. This net income of $20,000 and this payout ratio of 30%. And that is not just irrelevant information that they have given in the question. So here's how this works. This net income, 30% is being paid as a dividend. So 30% of 20,000, taking 20,000, multiplying it by 0 0.3, that gives us $6,000. So 6,000 is paid as a dividend. And what does that mean? That means that 14,000 is retained in the company, 70%. Right, one minus the payout ratio is the retention ratio. 70% of that net income, which is 14,000, is retained in the company for growth. And if you remember, this retained earnings from a net income increases the equity. So basically what's happening is this 400,000 of equity is increasing by 14,000 internally. So from 400,000, um, if you add 14,000, we would get 414,000. So the equity is growing internally by 14,000 to 414,000. So then any excess above that, that we have increased internally will be new equity that we have to issue. So to get from 414,000 to 424,000, we have to issue $10,000 worth of equity. So the equity issued is going to be 10,000. So that's the last trick of the question. Realizing that the equity issued is not just gonna be the difference between the new equity amount 424,000 and the old equity amount of 400,000, an increase in equity can come from two sources, either internally produce, so from the retained earnings of net income. So in this case, it was 14,000, 70% of the net income. So that increase equity organically, quote unquote, or internally. So the rest of the increase from 414,000 to 424,000 has to come externally. So we have to issue $10,000 worth of more equity to get to that 424,000 figure. So the equity issued is $10,000. So right there, those are your two final answers. So the debt issued was 6,000 to get it from 100,000 to 106,000. And the equity issued was 10,000. To get it from 400,000 to 414, um, that was from retained earnings. And then from 414, we issued 10,000 to get to 424,000. And that keeps the debt to equity ratio constant and the balance sheet is uh, balancing on both sides, on both the left side and the right side. So lots of tricks in this question, lots of uh, stuff to take in. Did my best to explain it. Hopefully you got all that. If not, just rewatch the video maybe once or twice and it should sink in by then.